everybody and welcome to episode, I didn't check, <laughs> of the This Old Knit podcast. I'm your host Nina, otherwise known as Ine on Ravelry, Instagram, and Pinterest. And you can find show notes for this episode and all previous episodes on this corresponding thread in my Ravelry group. So welcome. Um, This is probably going to be a pretty quick podcast this week. I'm doing it very impromptu. I do not have show notes and um, yeah, sorry about that. (laughs) Uh, So anyway, just some quick administrative things before I forget. And I'm trying to figure out if there's glare on my glasses. It looks like there is. So I'm just going to take those off. Um, I forgot to set up an, a thread for the three-year anniversary, so I will do that. And I have received a prize donation, so I'm going to um, give away for that uh, a skein of our humble castle. It is a. soy protein fiber, 378 yards. Um, The yarn is processed in Canada, but then it is dyed in Michigan. And the colorway is geranium. So I thought it'd be really pretty for spring. This one's actually from my stash. So um, yeah, thought it'd be a nice springy color. It's a really pretty like bubblegum pink or like the color of amoxicillin, (laughs) the liquid version for kids. That's what color of pink that this is. But it would make a really pretty um, shawlette or a cowl or something like that. It's very drapey. It's very much like silk is what it behaves like and it's really, really soft. So um, if you would like to win this skein, then um, go and follow the prompt in the thread for my three-year anniversary giveaway. So that's one prize that I have to give. And then um, I also mentioned in my last podcast that I test knit the Something Wicked mitten pattern for Kristen Lehrer, uh, who is the dyer behind Bull and Vine Yarns and the host of the Yarngasm podcast. And she gave me a copy to give away to all of you. So I'm going to use that for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway because we've reached a little over 1,000 subscribers. So um, yeah, I if you would like to win a copy of the Something Wicked Mitts by Kristen, um, yeah, go and comment in that giveaway thread. And then the third prize donation that, or sorry, yeah, The second prize donation, third prize, that I received is from Coddington, um, who is Autumn. She is Coddington Autumn on Instagram and Coddington on Ravelry. So she sewed this super, super cute bag, uh, which is like the new version of uh, Peter Pan. Joshua watches it, but I don't remember what the name of it is. But anyway, it's got that really cute fabric on it. And then inside it's kind of a satiny fabric and it's quilted. So her bags are just really well made. They're always um, kind of squishy and soft and very large. Um, She uses these really great zippers, which I would love to know where she gets them because the zipper pulls are a lot bigger than the ones that I use. Um, So you can put this nice D-ring on it for a handle. And mine are the smaller ones. So I have to just, um, I don't know, put like a little stitch marker or something on there and then I sew on a handle. So I love uh, the way that she constructs her bags and thank you so much Autumn for donating this prize. So I will use this as the Q1, hmm, maybe I'll use it for the adult garment cow uh, prize. Yeah, I think I'll use it for the adult garment cow prize. So um, I may extend that just by a week because I'm actually going to be traveling for work the first week of April. So I am not going to 
have time to think about locking down a thread on the 31st and making sure that I draw for prize winners. So um, let's just go ahead and extend that to uh, through the second week of April and then I will draw for prize winners before I podcast again. So I think I would be due to podcast at the end of that week um, when I come back, but I'm, it's probably going to be late because I get back that weekend and then I'm going to have to immediately get things back in order and get ready for work the next week. So um, my podcast will probably be delayed, so let's just delay the end to that cal as well. So I'll update that corresponding thread so that it reflects the newer date and please keep getting your entries in. I love seeing everything and um, yeah keep knitting adult garments. And then I haven't picked out a prize for the uh, Q1 of the Stash Your Shelf Challenge. I'm probably going to do a Ravelry pattern download um, just because I'm really busy right now. So that will be one less thing I'll have to go and mail out because I've already got two things that I'll have to go mail out. And then um, for Q2, I, it will probably be a physical prize. So that's all that. So I'm actually going to keep these two together so that I know where they are. Or I'll frantically look for the pink yarn and wonder where it is. And then, um, yeah, I'll watch my own podcast for show notes and I'll remember. Ha ha. I can't see you. <laughs> um, so I have got quite a bit of knitting done since the last podcast. Or maybe not. I mean, I've kind of been all over the place with knitting. I feel like... My life is all over the place and I will talk about that more at the end in the babbling, blathering stream of consciousness section. <laughs> um, but one thing that I did complete is my feather nest raglan. So after I podcast last time, I actually knit the entire second sleeve in about a day and a half. Um, it was uh, really straightforward, and after I had knit the first one, I knew exactly how long to knit it. I had memorized the stitch pattern by that point, so it was quite easy to complete. And I just kind of sat down and did it. So I'm going to stand up so you can see it, hopefully. <laughs> My lighting is not the greatest. So this is the Feather Nest Raglan by Amy Miller. If you're just joining me, if you're not, then you know really darn well what this pattern is. I'm going to scoot my rocking chair back. I really, really love the fit on this one. I feel like I finally got the fit right on my sweaters. It's super comfortable. It is knit out of Knit Picks Full Circle in the Cardinal colorway. And what I did is I extended the length. So I knit it quite a bit longer than the pattern called for. And then uh, did the ribbing on the bottom. I also um, I think I knit the sleeves quite a bit longer. Even then, I almost wish that I had knit maybe four more rows because once I wear it for a little while, they do start to ride up a little bit. So I may or may not rip that bind out, bind off out at some point so that, um, they can kind of come onto my hand a little bit. When I put my arms out, you can see they're fine. They're not pulling back behind my wrist or anything, but, um, yeah, I like my sleeves to be a little bit longer. Uh, there is short row shaping on the neck, so I love that it's not up against my neck. Um, that's the one thing I don't like about my honey pullover is that the neckline kind of pulls up a little bit and ends up pushing up against my neck. This one does not do that at all. I actually wore it when I was traveling, so I wore it on the plane, and it was really nice because despite being worsted weight, it's, it breathes very nicely because it's got um, this great pattern. So it's kind of a little bit open. So I'm wearing like a t-shirt under it um, or a tank top under it, but it breathes very well. So it was not too hot until the flight back and they didn't really have the air conditioning going. So yeah, everyone was hot. So then I took it off and I had the t-shirt underneath, so that was fine. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend the pattern. 
I love the way that Amy Miller writes her patterns. They're very clear. The sizing seems to be pretty spot on, um, at least for me. And this one doesn't have a lot of finished objects. I think there, it's only been knit maybe 115 times. It was in the Interweave Knits fall 2014 issue, but um, you can get it on Ravelry through the Interweave website. So yeah, go knit a feather nest because it's awesome. So this is both stash and shelf because um, I had this stash for quite a while. And then um, obviously I had the magazine since 2014. So I'm really happy that I finally knit it. And there's maybe three more sweaters out of that magazine that I also want to knit. So those are now kind of queued up and I've matched some yarn with them. So this is my only finished object for this week. Everything else is in whip form. And that speaks to my being all over the place. So I'm just going to go and order down in my bag of uh, what I've been working on. And actually need to go buy a new carry on because when I was going through the airport, my very last flight, I got to the, what do you call it? Like the terminal or the place where you queue up for the plane, uh, gate. I got to the gate and there were a bunch of people around and I noticed like these little pieces of black plastic on the floor. And I was like, oh man, somebody's got, you know, black plastic they're just leaving everywhere and there were these two little babies that a family had and they were kind of letting them run around and I didn't want them to pick it up and eat it put it in their mouths and I was trying to figure out you know I was following this trail of black plastic and it led to my bag <laughs> so one of my wheels had actually like the whole casing around it had broken off so the just plastic rim was still there so I was able to drag it through the final airport to get to a taxi to go home but um yeah there it's they're riveted in so there's no way for me to replace them which makes me angry because that suitcase is in perfectly good condition so otherwise it's fine but i cannot manhandle a suitcase so um yeah i'm gonna donate it and maybe somebody else can use it and won't mind having um, a broken wheel and they'll just want to use it as a carrying bag. But uh, I do need to get a new one with properly functioning wheels. I have had that bag for like 15 years. So it, it did serve its time, it's a Samsonite, but yeah, it makes me sad. I don't like getting rid of things that are otherwise in perfect shape. It seems wasteful. Um, so anyway, I did a lot of work on my glittery blanket of unicorns and magic, otherwise known as the Gibbum, G-B-U-M. So if you ever see that on my Instagram, hashtag, sometimes I actually type it out because it remembers it on my phone, uh, but it's really long. So otherwise I'll put G-B-U-M of what I'm working on. And uh, it's knit all out of sparkle yarn. So gold or silver, silver or bronze Stellina, um, depending on the dyer behind it. So here it is. So I think since last time I showed it to you, I finished this section, which has um, navy blue, light blue, and green. And then I went into this um, green, light blue, and chocolate. I may even have started that section. So I finished out that mini, which is a yarn at home mom mini. And then I moved on to a no makers mini of garden gnome in the sparkle gnome base. And I was gonna do fruit cake next, but none of my other yarns are self striping yarns. And because the you know size of the strip is only 10 stitches, the stripes were really big. So it just looked really weird with the rest of the blanket. I did a little bit and then I ripped it out because I didn't like it. So I'm gonna have to think about that of like not buying sparkly self-striping yarns, thinking they're gonna be able to go into, that the scraps can go in my glitter blanket because they really can't. It just didn't look good. 
at least with everything else. And I don't want any place again where it looks really strange and off because I had that before and that's what made me restart the whole stinking thing. Um, so I switched instead to under the tree. This is leftovers from a pair of socks that I knit. This is also a no makers Christmas colorway again on the sparkle gnome base. So when I finished this one, which I did not have a full mini, um, Amanda's minis are, I think 40 yards from the random mini mini skein club. This one, I did not have that much left over for my socks. Cause I've also, uh, traded it in swaps with other people. So I'm just going to knit it until I'm run till I run out. This is how much I have. So it's not a lot. And then I believe the next one is Stars Hollow, which is also a self striping, but it is micro stripes, like one single stripe. So it might be okay. I'm, I don't know. I'm iffy on that one. So we'll have to see how it goes. Otherwise I will move to this one, which I believe was in the villains pack. I don't remember which one it is though, unfortunately. I'd have to look it up. Um, but, but I want to go into like oranges and yellows next. So um, I do need something that has orange or yellow in it to be able to progress. So there it is in its entirety so far. But like I said, I'm starting to transition over to from kind of I was in the blues and greens over to um, oranges and yellows. Sorry, I'm saying um so much. I'm really tired. I got like five hours of sleep last night. Uh, and I have a really bad headache. I think I was starting to get a migraine. I was starting to feel like physically sick and stuff. So I did take some medicine. I lay down for a little while and I think I'm okay now. But when I go to get the suitcase, I get some food too. <laughs> okay. So second thing, and I was really hoping I would have had this done before my trip, but I did not finish it. And then I started doing other things because ooh shiny, but I'm working on it again today. I do think that I will get it done today. And then I can uh, block it and have it dry for next week, hopefully before it gets warm outside. So this is the Lilitin hat by Amelia Bjorn something. Um, she is the hostess behind the Arctic Knitting podcast. She's the same designer who did the Winter Crown hat. So if you love the winter crown hat, try the lily tinned. And I'm going to come a little bit closer because it is gorgeous. So it is like a snowy, snowy winter scene. There are snowflakes on the bottom. Then this treescape with falling snow, another set of snowflakes. And now I am just starting to do the crown decreases and they are like forming a huge snowflake on the top. So these are the like the crystals on the edges. It's gorgeous. I don't know how she comes up with this stuff, but it's beautiful and I love it. I have a progress keeper from Little Bitty Delights. It is a little latte with a foam heart on it. The two colors that I am using, the navy blue is a Tuka wool fingering weight. And I don't remember the name of the color because it's in Finnish and I don't speak Finnish. Um, and the other one is lollipop cabin organic fingering weight yarn in the rock climbing at Mount Pilchuck. I've shown these both before. I'm sorry if you can hear my stomach. I'm hungry. Uh, so there you go. It's a very subtly variegated, like sagey green and blue. 
And the Tuca wool is pretty much a solid navy. I'm a little bit worried about uh, playing yarn chicken, but there's a lot there. So I think I'll be okay because I just have the crown of the hat to complete. It is a little bit tight going on. I think that it's going to, ah, sorry. I think it's going to stab me in the eye with its needles is what it's going to do. I think it's going to block out a little bit though. Um, because tuku wool kind of relaxes and blooms with washing. And both of these are very rustic yarns, so I think they're going to be fine. So um, it's not like it's cutting off my circulation or anything. It's certainly not. See, there's extra room there. So I think it's going to be fine. Once I wash it and those fibers relax a little bit and kind of even out, it's going to be okay. And I did start to just knit a little bit more evenly up here. I think part of this was stress-related because um, I was trying to prepare for the trip and probably not a good idea to knit color work when you're stressed. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. It's already done and I'm not ripping it back. So magic of blocking, aggressive blocking. See, it stretches a lot. I think it's fine. I'm really interested to see how it's going to soften with uh, washing and blocking though. Okay, and then my next one is not actually in its bag. I need to put it back in its bag. These I cast on on the airplane home because it was dark and I was tired, so um, my la I got in at like almost midnight. Um, this couldn't get really great flights coming back, so I didn't trust myself to work on lace, which is the other project I took with me. Um, but of course I had a skein of sock yarn, so I cast on a pair of socks for Megwin because she needs more socks. And she picked out this yarn before I left. Uh, for me to knit socks for her. So it is the yarn I've showed previously. It is Knit, knit Picks Felici in the Gummy Bears colorway. I haven't seen them bring this one back out yet. Um, so I did a 60 stitch sock because, yeah, believe it or not, she's wearing a 60 stitch, 60 stitch sock. Only four fewer than my socks. Um, and then that lets me kind of put them in the dryer if, or if they get into the dryer because she is starting to do her own clothes. So I want to make sure that, you know, she doesn't have to worry about that. She's pretty good about pulling her socks out, but every once in a while they get stuck and stuff. Uh, so I am doing the vanilla bean sock pattern that I like so much. It works really, really well with Felici yarn. And this one... Unlike most Felici yarn, it does not really have any stripes that are super, super close in color value. These two are the probably the worst offenders, and I think they're pretty different. So I really like this colorway. And I'm pretty far along for a Megwin sock. I maybe need to do two more uh, stripes, and then I will start the heel. And usually for a Felici, I just work from the other end of the ball for her socks um, and I don't bother with finding a different contrasting heel and toe because then it's not usually as soft as Felici and does it behave in the same way. It's just a really unique, very spongy yarn. So that's just what I'm going to do. And if you'll recall, I had socks for Joshua. Well, I tried them on him and they are too small. So I am going to redo them. That's the cuff. I mean, it does stretch a lot, but there, uh, I did a 48 stitch count and I probably should have done 52 or I might've done 52 and I need to do 56. I don't know. I'm going to count it and then I will do more. I will do four more. Um, so those are on hold. And then I also had another ball of yarn with me because I'm crazy and I'm going to somehow knit three pairs of socks and a shawl in two days. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. This was totally safety yarn. This was security yarn. Um, it is 
punch bug from uh, Nitpix as well. So it's Nitpix, Felici, and punch bug. I haven't touched these since I got back. No, I have. That's not true. I knit on them when I went to lunch with a friend. Okay, sorry, my husband just sent me a text, so now it's stuck in front of my face. Okay. <laughs> and then um, yesterday, I was doing a lot of cleaning, so I cleaned out the entire closet in the yellow room. Part of the reason that I'm not podcasting from the yellow room right now, because uh, I haven't cleaned up from that hot mess that I created for myself. But I do have some stuff done, and I've shredded so much paper. It's crazy how much documentation that we get, you know, as people, adults, whatever. There are so many papers, like tax returns and old um, our original mortgage papers, because, you know, we have a new mortgage now, so... Um, whole bunch of stuff from when my um, husband's father passed away and just you know all the legal documents and crap that you gather over the years so I've been trying to really go through our files and not keep all of that stuff that I don't need anymore so I shredded a whole, whole bunch of stuff but now I need to put everything back in the file cabinet that we keep and um, going through books and just all that junk. Okay, long story short, that took me till about 11 o'clock last night and I had not knit all day. So I was like, I'm gonna cast on something new because I want to. <laughs> and since I really love Amy Miller patterns, I have wanted for a while to cast on the Sperry sweater. It is a top-down raglan with a shirt tail hem so like the rounded hem that's longer in the back than in the front and it has striping on it so I'm going to slightly modify the stripe sequence because I don't have enough yarn of the main color I wanted to use to do it the way the pattern calls for but I'm pretty darn close so I think my size calls for 930 yards um, but I have 900 but then the contrasting color only calls for half of that, and I have 900. So I'm just going to make the stripes be a little bit wider of the contrasting color. And um, yeah, that should make up the difference, I think. Okay, so the colors I'm going to use are... Oh, that's really blowing out. Giant Peach in Dreaming Color Smushy. And Butter Peeps in Dream and Color Smushy. So this one is like a light yellow, but it has peach like blush tones all over it, which I don't know if you're going to be able to pick up. Maybe. I don't know. It's a very pale yellow. So this is going to be my main color, and this is going to be my contrast color. I'm also going to do the uh, neckband and the cuffs in this color. In the original design, it's all done with the main color. So I think between all that, it's going to make up for it. And I'll make my stripes slightly wider. There are two rows for the contrast stripes. I'm going to make them four, I think. I'm going to see how it looks. The first set. Okay. So it does have shaping, neck shaping on it, um, but it's done a little bit differently. So it's not done using short rows. It's done using casting on additional stitches. So there's a lot more to remember than I thought there was going to be. I kind of was going for a mindless project because of my brain being all over the place, but that's fine. I think once I'm done with the shaping and it's joined in the round, it's going to be much easier. <laughs> Top down raglans are not that hard. So right now I'm working on the neckline. It's got a little bit more of a rounded neckline. So it's a little wider than this one. This one's more like a traditional crew necky 
thing. It's more of a scoop on this top. I'll just insert a picture so you can see it. <laughs> but I haven't got very far, as you can see. I am using these very beautiful eggy stitch markers that I've had for a little while, but I got them from Sugar Tots. So there's a speckled robin's egg. This one's like a glittery white egg. A gray speckled egg. It's like made of agate. And then this one is a clear almost like resin with sparkles in it too so just four little eggs i thought it was nice and springy and i think of this as being a springy color combination it has peeps in the name and you guys know i love peeps so i am knitting it on what else a size five needle um, and then I'll do my, you know, neck band and stuff in probably a size three. Uh, but that is not for a while because you pick that up at the end. And it is in a gorgeous bag that Sarah from the Love Sock Wool podcast gifted to me quite a while ago. But I love it. Okay, and then I think this is my last whip, my biggest whip, yeah. Uh, right before my trip, I cast on the newest shawl from Hokey Locatelli called the Washed Out Shawl. So I shared the tiny little bit that I had uh, knit with all of you. And then this was my main plain knitting when I was going out and I knit on it a little bit in the hotel maybe. I actually did cross stitch in the hotel which I did not bring up to share with you uh, because. So here it is now. Oops. So it's knit, I guess you would say knit on the bias. I'm knitting it this way but then this is going to become the point later. So this part I was blending the okay so it's in th two colors of wool and bind yarns so far and then I'm going to add in a color of Moonstone Dye Works. For those of you just joining me I should say the colorways. Uh, so my first colorway which is this one it's going to go on the floor and I just don't care is the Evil Queen. I got it as part of the Once Upon a Time Yarn Club that Kristen did hmm, last year, maybe, or two years ago. Probably two years ago, actually. So this first lace section, and then right here, you start blending. So I blended the Evil Queen and Amarin, which is from the Court of Thorns and Roses inspired uh, club that she just completed. This was the final installment, but I don't think you can really tell. It doesn't look any different really than here, which doesn't have any of that in it. So I knew that I didn't really have enough yardage as what Hohe called for in her pattern to do the middle section, which was my Amarin. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna use all Evil Queen until it starts calling for me to do 100% of the second color. So I just went ahead and did Evil Queen, Evil Queen, Evil Queen, and I intended to just work in Amarin and all would be good. Like I would just join it and then start the first lace section. Well, oh, Nina, <laughs> the best laid plans. While I was on this plane, in my sleep delirium state, I was like, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a marker over here, and then when I have, I'll count to 100, and I'll put it here. And then when I have enough stitches to the left of the marker, I'll know that I'm done with this section. Good. I won't have to keep counting on this plane. 
problem is that you're only increasing on this side. And on this side, you actually decrease to keep it flat. Do you see the problem? This does not stay 100. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So I got to where this side was the right amount. I cut the yarn and I was like, okay, I'm gonna work on it later. Um, it's gonna be fine, blah, blah, blah. Then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna count the stitches. After I cut the yarn, right? That was smart. I counted them. Not enough, obviously. I was like, what? There's only 90 on this side? What's going on? Like, can I not count to 100? I must have been really tired. So I was like, fine, I'll rejoin the ball, knitting a little bit more. And then I realized, well, crap. I know what I did. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe I will blend a little bit of Amarin and the Evil Queen. Now, just to blend into the lace, because I didn't have that many more rows and I'd already joined it and I'd already knit a couple rows. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna do a thicker stripe and then start thinning the Evil Queen stripe and thickening the Amarin stripe. And at this point, I think that the rows were long enough that you actually really could tell, because it is lighter. So you can see there are some stripes there. So it's a little more like a find your fade um, effect here. And then now I'm 100% Amarin. So there are some stripes, but that's fine. I think it's blending nicely. And once the whole thing is done, like that's just not gonna be a thing. And like the next whole section is going to be Amarin anyway. So it's good that I kind of faded into it a little bit. So I'm ready now to start this guy again. Um, I think I'm actually ready to do the holes, the yarn overs, <laughs> the holes. I'm ready to do the next set of yarn overs. So I stopped um, again because I don't want to do stupid things <laughs> and not knit it right. Um, on this one, I have another Itty Bitty Delights. Progress Keeper. This one is a peppermint mocha. My children love this one and they love to pretend that they are drinking it. So they'll come up to my knitting and go, I want to tend. That's what Joshua says. And he'll go, you know, super cute. Uh, so it's already really big. And yeah, I love it. It's really beautiful. So that is the Washed Out Shawl by Hoagy Locatelli. Two colors I'm currently using, or now one color our woolen vine yarns both on the blitzed base and then my final color will be moonstone dye works um, stardust colorway and i don't remember which of her bases that it's on i believe it is her it's like the non superwash merino base and it's a very pale pink lavender with some subtle gray speckling so it's going to go really well with that lighter part of Amarin. And this will be the big, uh, there's a big like lace edging on it. And I wanted it to be a more uh, solid color because it's a lot more complex. I might have a picture of it. Hang on a second. Yeah. So this part right here. I want that to be all in the, uh, the solid Moonstone Dye Works colorway. And I think Tommy actually has some Stardust in her shop now. So if you're interested, you can go get your own Stardust. And that is in my tea bag, or tea bags, tea cups and teapots bag. Okay. So that is all of my whips that I have going at this time. And now I will show you my acquisitions. There are not that many. Um, and I actually forgot one downstairs, so I'll show it next time. But it's a magazine. So while I was um, traveling for work, I was in Connecticut and um, I did find a local yarn store there. So I will insert a picture. Here. I think I have a picture 
um, but they carried Plutolope, which I was really surprised at. I've never actually seen it in person before, and I've never seen a yarn store that carried it, probably because they get a lot more snow than we do here. So it's actually, I don't know, <laughs> useful to have an Icelandic yarn. That would probably be too hot for, um, for Ohio's climate, except for maybe like one or two months of the year, but you wouldn't get enough use out of it. So anyway, they had all of the discs. I think they're called discs. No, plates. They're called plates. So they had just a stack of plates of all these colors of Plutolope and all of these other beautiful, rustic, uh, local wool yarns down in this um, one room. So like the yarn store you came in and it was kind of a small room and then you went down a little stairway to a lowered room, almost like when you have a, um, like a den in homes where they had a couple steps down. So it was kind of like that. And down in the lower section is where they had just walls of yarn and, um, you know, lots of stuff. So a knit night was going on and they kind of were restocking. So they just had boxes and stuff all over the place, but it was a really sweet yarn store and the uh, owner was there. And I think one of the ladies that worked there was there as well, kind of going around and helping people out. She was also knitting and she noticed my sweater and asked if I knit it. And I said, yes. And one of the other girls there was asking what weight yarn it was out of. And the woman was like, oh, it was, it's worsted, right? And I was like, yes, it is worsted. Um, so one of them wrote the pattern down. So maybe someone else out there will make a featherless raglan. Um, but they were really nice. And um, it happened to be my mom's birthday when I was traveling. So I got some yarn for her. Um, and I'm going to see her tomorrow. So I'm going to give it to her. But I am recording so I could show it to all of you first. So she loves greens and she has green eyes, so they look very nice on her. So this is Dirty Water Dye Works, which I had never seen before, and it's definitely not carried around here. This is the Lillian base, so it's 100% superwash merino, 400 yard put up. Um, and it is a tonal, which is always nice to get a nice uh, tonal yarn, right? my solids are good for a lot of stuff. I didn't want to get something that was crazy out there that then mom wouldn't be able to use, but this would make a really nice addition to a shawl, beautiful pattern socks, pretty much the possibilities are endless. So the colorway for this one is Gooseberry. And it's just a really beautiful celadon. I like the color of new leaves. And then I was so torn on what I wanted to get. I originally had a rose color in my hands and then I was like, I have so much of this tone of yarn, I wanted to get something different. So I also got the same dyer, same base, uh, Dirty Water Dye Works, and I got a really beautiful sky blue color it's actually called Sea Breeze. And again, it is a tonal sky blue. I really like it. I'm kind of thinking that I might knit um, the socks that Helen Stewart designed for the latest Lane Magazine issue. It's gonna either be this or my yarn that I bought at the wool gathering that's called, uh, have you tried the fried cheese curds? And that one's like a gold tonal with like some gray, dark gray speckles. Not very many, it's very, very subtle speckling. I'm sorry, I can't talk. I really should have drunk another cup of coffee before I tried the podcast. Um, yeah, I really love it. So I'm glad that I picked this one and not the rose one because this is really different from anything I have. 
it's beautiful and if I decide not to make socks out of it I think it would be great in a more than one color shawl it's you know it could go with a lot of things that are in my stash so that is what I got for me and for mom so happy birthday to mom <laughs> and then the last thing that came is my uh, kit I got one of the kits from Kristen for the latest Helen Stewart pattern that's coming out, I think it is coming out on the 31st. So right now she has early bird pricing on it. If you go and pre-order, it is a mystery knit along based on impressionist art. So I'm really excited about that. She hasn't said anything about the shape or anything like that, but um, I love all of Helen Stewart's shawls and I just noticed that Kristen gave me one of her buttons oh my god I'm so happy because she got these made for uh Edinburgh Yarn Festival and I was worried she was gonna run out and I wouldn't get one um they're really they're glittery and sparkly and mauve um yeah so I'm gonna pop that on my bag oh yeah and I can show you guys that too because I didn't show you last time Okay, so it came with three colors. Uh, she has them in either Blitzed or Nouveau. Um, she is going to have them in her International Friendly Shop update today, but my podcast won't go up before they're all sold out. So hopefully you got one if you wanted one. Um, I love this color palette, though. Oh, my gosh. It has one of the colors I had been seriously lusting after and that's her solstice colorway so this was her winter colorway that she came up with this year is anyone surprised that I wanted this <laughs> it's taupey and uh it's like cream with some warm browns I guess they're cool browns aren't they and just very light speckling on the blitz face the second color is called Curious, and it is dusty pink mauve um, with some magenta speckles, some brown speckling, and some navy. This section right here is just gorgeous. Oh my gosh. That's my second color. And then the last color is called Thaw, and wow. This purple is just amazing. Um, so it's purple, almost a navy, a raspberry color, and uh, some darker, I don't know, more rich purples. Like this is a cooler purple almost towards blue, but that's more like a warm purple. So anyway, that one's Thaw. So I'm excited to see what Helen has come up with because her designs are beautiful. Uh, my Curious Handmade shawls are some of my very favorites to wear. And it's funny, my husband had an observation the other day that he said, I love that you have your shawls all queued up like um, men have ties to wear to business for business because I have all these different color shawls and I match them to my work outfits. And he said, it's like your power tie, but it's your power shawl. So yeah, work it ladies, wear your power shawls. It's the new power suit. So that's gonna be my um, impressionist MCAL shawl from Helen Stewart. I think it's four, four euro, um, which ended up being like 585 USD. So yeah, if you want to purchase the pattern, I highly suggest that you go and purchase it before the 31st because you will get the early bird pricing. Otherwise, you will pay the full price. And I don't know what that would be. Usually her shawls are more around the $7 mark, so I was saving like $2, $2 or $3. I'm gonna leave it in the plastic until I'm ready. Um, but I'm not going to cast on probably until I'm done with the hokey shawl just because I don't have any pre size 5 needles right now. Uh, I do. I have one pair of free ones. But anyway. Okay, so 
So last thing I want to show you, and then I need to go and get a bag and some food, is um, my enamel pins. So I did not show you the two that I got in my birthday package. So one is this cute little one of a chicken sitting on a bunch of yarn balls on the nest. And then the other one is this one and it says resting stitch face. It's a thing people. And then I got these from Knit Picks. And I'm actually going to switch these to, I got a pouch from um, my Aunt Lynn's stuff when she passed away and it's like made out of denim. It's a little bit more like a square and I think it'll be really great for enamel pins because it's just plain on one side. The other side has um, circles and they're made out of sequins but I think that plain side will be perfect for just the little podcaster pins that I get from people. So I have one from Meg there. I have a couple from Kristen. I think I have all the, all of the iterations of her pins over the years um, because I've gotten them with orders and stuff. And then, um, yeah, I think I have a Wooly Thistle one. Um, yeah, I've just got ones that I've either received with orders of yarn or that I've got uh, from podcasters. So yeah, I think that'll be fun to have them all in one place and they're kind of hard to see on this one. So this is a uh, little pouch that Annie Knitter um, gifted to me with a cabled Starbucks coffee mug. If you remember the ones that are like a cable pattern, she sent me one of those and she sent me this little bag and some other goodies. Uh, so I do use this every day. I use it for all of my notions, but I think that little notions pouch could be fun for carrying around. Let's see, oh, I do have the little card for where those pins came from, in case you are interested. The chicken one is from Ninja Chickens, and she actually has a podcast, too. So there's the information if you want to get a nesting yarn chicken of your own. And then the resting stitch face is from Punky Pins. And Espostrico has some really super cute pins that I want to get as well. They're really fun. Yeah. Um, so that's all the knitting content that I have for you for this week. And I do have some uh, pretty big news. <laughs> which accounts for all of the crazy. I'm checking to see if my husband and kids are coming back from the gym. Um, so I got a new job, um, same company that I've worked for before, but um, it is a promotion of sorts, which I'm really excited about, but it's in Connecticut. <laughs> So I am preparing to move my family to Connecticut. Uh, we're very, very excited and terrified all at the same time um, because we've never sold a house before. So I don't know how that works of um, selling your house and simultaneously buying a house because I need the down payment out of this house to be able to buy a new house. Uh, so we're gonna figure all that out. Uh, but we are super, super excited. It's a great opportunity for me from a career perspective. It is going to offer me a lot of growth and um, I'm really, really excited for the new challenge. I've been um, in the place where I am right now uh, for about six years. So I'm ready to see something different and um, yeah, it's going to be really great. But all of the leading up to that, right, is going to be a bit stressful. So uh, we're just trying to keep things calm and um, it's not probably going to be a long term move. It'll probably be um, a couple of years, uh, but I'm going to enjoy it during the time while I'm there. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot to take in. Um, I am really excited to see and meet all of the knitters in that area. And with that, I will be able to go to Rhinebeck this year in person because it's just a 
car ride away versus flying and staying somewhere. Um, so yeah, that's going to be really fun. I'm excited to attend Rain back and um, maybe I will see if my mom wants to come and stay at the house and drive with me. I don't know yet. Um, as of this recording, I have not told my family, uh, but I'm planning to tell them before I put this podcast up. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very excited and uh, nervous, but it'll be fun. Uh, it'll be a good adventure. And uh, we will not be moving as a family until after Megwin finishes school because uh, I, that was very important to me that she get to finish out the year where she is and then we'll have all summer to get used to the area and learn our way around and stuff before we have to worry about her being back in school again. So fingers crossed that that all works out. But because of that, I will have to do some commuting back and forth because I don't want to leave um, my new team in the lurch. So I that's the sacrifice I'm making to make sure that Megwin gets to finish out her school year here with her friends. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of back and forth things. So with that, if I am delayed in sending prizes out or responding to posts or anything, know that I am going to do it, but there is a lot going on in my life right now. So yeah, it just may take a little more time than usual. And I was never that great about doing that quickly anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so right now we're just in crazy purge mode. We're trying to go through everything that we've accumulated over the 10 years that we've been in this house. And also just crap we brought from California with us that we never touched ever the whole time we've been here in Ohio. Clearly we don't need it. If we haven't touched it, we don't need it. So we're just donating, throwing away burning tons of boxes because we just had lots of empty cardboard boxes. Um, so the, yeah. And recycling things, of course. Uh, so yeah, that's what's going on in my life. That's enough. I don't need anything else. Um, so yeah, anyway, I, I'm just going to babble now and I really need more coffee and I need some food and I need to go get another roller bag to travel. So until next time, thank you all for joining me. Happy knitting and spend some time this next two and a half weeks ish doing the things you love and I will see you next time. All right. Bye bye. You're gonna run into the tree. Go that way now. I don't have enough so it's bigger more. Okay, we'll go move it and roll it another direction. Okay. Okay, roll it some more. You want to roll it another way? Pretty good job. Whoa. I'm pretty amazed you made that. You better sit it down gently or it'll break. Yeah, but it's going out a bigger one. It's bigger. Uh huh. Yeah. I get my enormous.